Hello, my name is Carly Stevens from Carly Stevens Books, and here are 10 ways to keep your story going even when you're not sure where it's going. Hey, so welcome back. Um, 10 ways to continue the story. Uh, I think are, it, these are going to be very helpful, especially in the throes of NaNoWriMo, which is when I am filming this. Currently, I am pantsing or discovery writing my pr current project, and it's it's been a while since I've gone in so blind, and so I thought this was a great opportunity to revisit some of the ways that I used to keep stories going and things that I've learned more recently that could help a lot of you out there as well, especially when you're in the middle and you're feeling maybe a little bogged down and unsure where to go. So tip number one is an improv trick. It's yes and no but. Um, so if there is a question or an attempt or whatever it is that can have a yes or no answer, make sure that that's not the end of the story. You don't want to close any loops, um, or certainly you don't want to close all loops. And so if things work out, yes, great. And what? No? Okay, what, what else then? So um, just add that extra piece so that none of those loops of um, curiosity are being closed. So yes and or no but. Number two is a series of try-fail cycles. This is a really simple one that was helpful for me um, even as I was plotting, to be honest, my finale to the young adult fantasy book Kingdoms on Fire. Basically, if I wasn't sure what was going to happen, I would have them try and I would have them fail. I would have them try again and I'd have them fail. And I would think, okay, let's, uh, you know, what could go wrong? And I would have things continue to go wrong. Eventually, of course, um, most stories are going to go past that at a certain stage, but you want to keep that failure going and, and that automatically raises the stakes and the, the excitement when, when there is success, um, hopefully, at the end. Um, as there will be in many of our stories. Number three, it is what if. Just what if and that's it. So what if this happened? What if that happened? Just brainstorm like crazy and sometimes that will spur an idea that could be the key to unlocking everything that you need for the next step of your story. Number four is payoff promises. This is especially important if you are in the final third or so of your story. Um, note what you wrote earlier on or what you kind of teased or what, um, you know, check off, check off guns you have lying around um, and figure out, okay, what do I need to now explain or what backstory do I need to start actually revealing or, you know, what are some of those things that you set up at the beginning that you have not yet paid off? And that can definitely move things forward in a satisfying way. Um, number five is beat sheets. Now I know beat sheets are more of a plotter's device. Um, I tend to land somewhere in between plotter and discovery writer, but beat sheets can be really helpful if you're thinking, okay, what is going to happen next? You can just take a look at generally where your story would fall on a beat sheet. Are you in act one, act two, act three? Um, is there a thresholds that you pass where there's a point of no return, you know, some of those recognizable things that you probably have been unconsciously doing all the way along. And so just look, what would be the next beat in the story? You don't need to plot out the entire thing, but um, what what is generally going to move the story forward if you follow that formula? So beat sheet, it is something that I'm keeping handy as I'm pantsing this story. I haven't plotted out the whole thing, obviously, by definition, but I am keeping it as a reference just to kind of keep myself from wandering too far afield because I have been known to follow people um, at random, definitely when I was younger, and now I want to stay tighter, more on track, even though I'm not quite sure where everything is going. Number six is raise the stakes. Obviously, something is at stake. Your character wants something and, and something bad will happen if they fail. So raise the stakes. It doesn't need to be like the world will end. There are too many stories, well, not maybe not too many, where the world is going to end if something is not accomplished. And maybe you're writing a thriller and that is the case. Great. Okay, that's fine. But this can also be an, a personal stake. 
This can be something that directly affects a family member or a friend or peace of mind or, you know, just one more layer of what could go wrong if the main character fails in whatever their mission might be. Okay, next one is to um, deepen the mystery. Uh, so you can do this in a variety of, of ways. If you are used to writing cozy mysteries or something like that, then perhaps you're, you're used to what that looks like, adding another clue or another level to that mystery. But every story has some level of mysteriousness to it. Otherwise, why would we continue writing? What is there to figure out? Um, so a simple way that you can use this is just by introducing something kind of random. Just roll the dice and then plan to figure out how it all fits in later on. Um, this is more of like a, a last chance gambit sort of move, but hey, if you're stuck, then just have something kind of random happen and then make sure that you do think it through, um, even if it's retroactively and um, have that make sense later on. But deep in the mystery, that's gonna keep your readers reading. Um, next is, what do you like to see? So this was something that I mentioned in the brainstorming video, but maybe you've made a list of the kinds of things that you just enjoy seeing. Maybe you read a blurb and if it has, um, you know, mermaids in it or something, then you are on board. Just like what of those elements that you love can you reasonably bring in to this story? If you love you know, fall vibes or something like that, then maybe that is enough to kind of shake the story awake and keep it um, going in a direction that keeps you interested and therefore the reader as well. Okay, another one is not for the, f the next one is not for the faint of heart. It is writing out of order. So maybe you know something that's going to happen in the future. Maybe there's something that you want to happen in the future. Then just go for it, write that scene, especially in NaNoWriMo where you have to just generate so many words to reach that 50,000 um, mark, if that's what you are going for. That, I mean, that gets the words flowing. Maybe it's a scene that is um, later in the story, but you can write from A to C and then fill in B later. It could actually be the glue that you need to kind of hold everything together instead of getting bogged down with step B and not actually getting to step C at all. So this is, this is almost like the anti beat sheet uh, version. So if you have some plotter leanings, you can go with the beat sheet. If you have um, no plotter leanings, but you know something that you want to happen, then you can just kind of hop around and fill in the, the blanks as you go. Um, and then finally, the last one, main characters, in order for there to be change, um, need to overcome something within themselves, some belief, some lie that they um, have have grown to believe. So, um, for instance, if a character thinks, maybe they don't consciously think this, often they don't, this is just underlying everything. Maybe your character thinks that they are fundamentally unlovable. You know, you're writing a romance and there's a character that has just been told that since, you know, they were a child or maybe in high school something happened that just um, lodge that lie within them and so they're unable to make these meaningful connections because they just don't see it panning out. Um, so char main characters have these lies that they believe and something that you can do that really is meaningful and you can address it in so many different easy ways um, is that you can either confirm that lie. So if the person thinks that they're unlovable, have something, have a comment that somebody makes or uh, a terrible relationship that they have really enforce that that is the case. Or you can move it in the opposite direction. You can move them toward that positive character development and, and uh, introduce a scene, a moment, a comment that starts to break down whatever that lie might be. So you can either confirm or um, start to overcome that lie and either one is going to have an, a nice emotional nice um, maybe not nice but an emotional impact for the reader um, so that is another direction that you can go 
All right, I hope that this was helpful for you. 10 ways to continue your story even when you're not quite sure where it's going. Um, let me know how you're doing with your story down below. If you're participating in NaNoWriMo, great. This is the first year that I'm even attempting it. Um, so, you know, wish me luck. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe for more um, tips and, you know, writing, publishing, and indie author life. All right.